This is Support is Sexy, episode 29, with the Hudson Kitchen founder, Janaba Johnson-Jones. Welcome to the Support is Sexy podcast. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, producer, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I talk to women entrepreneurs who share their journeys and the true stories of their wins and their lessons and give you insight and inspiration to take your business and your life to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I am so happy to have you here because you know it just would not be the same without you. So today's episode, we have Miss Janaba Johnson-Jones, and Janaba is the owner of a business I find really interesting. It's called The Hudson Kitchen, and The Hudson Kitchen is a space for food entrepreneurs, and it includes commercial space for cooking, as well as workshops, storage space, networking, a bunch of different things that Janaba plans to have going on there. And she is in the early stages of the business. And in this episode, she talks to us actually about a recent event that she went to where she was pitching her business to potential investors and where she had a little bit of trouble. And as she said, she choked. So what I wanted to know about was that experience and what she learned from it, but then some other things about her and her growing business. So what she shares with us along with that story is how to perfect your pitch. Also, the first three steps to start your own food business how to market your food business, also how to have a rock-solid team no matter what your business is, the best ways to push yourself to network for those of us who are introverts or not, just a tip on how you can push yourself to network, which is necessary for your business, and the importance of putting your goals and how you'll get to those goals on paper. So I'm excited to share this interview with you. It's a short one, but it's a great one. So without further ado, Janaba Johnson-Jones. So Janaba, thank you so much for joining us for an episode of Support is Sexy. I'm excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, I have to ask you the first question I ask everyone. When did you first fall in love with entrepreneurship? I think I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I've just taken a a long time to kind of to get here. Uh, But ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to have my own business. And now I've kind of finally taken the time to take the journey to take the journey to figure out what I really want to do. What do you think it was as a little girl that made you intrigued by it? Did you see it in other people or what was the the draw or just your imagination? I think just my imagination. I just always, always wanted to just have my own business. My parents actually, my dad's a doctor, but he has his own, he had his own practice for almost 30 years. And so they definitely, they work together in, in, in that business. So that's kind of why, what I saw um, at home. Where did you grow up? Um, everywhere. <laughs> so oh, really? I'm a, I got a I got military brat. So but we spent uh, most of the time in Texas. So that Texas is where I what I claim. So I grew up in Arlington, Texas. Mm, and what was Janaba like as a little girl? <laughs> very quiet, I think. It was really, really quiet, very much to myself. Enjoy being by myself and still to this day, enjoy being by myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the introvert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And how were you like in school and that kind of thing? Did you keep to yourself? Were you a a bookworm? A lot of the quiet people have said that they were bookworms or like me just writing and making up my own stories, keeping ourselves busy. What were you up to as a little girl? Um, I wasn't I wouldn't call myself a bookworm. I definitely did love I definitely love to read. But I yeah, I was just involved in everything. So one of the things that kind of gets me out of that shell definitely wouldn't call myself myself an introvert but what gets me out of my shell is being involved in everything so I'm the person that's on the committee or I'll get to know people mm-hmm. nice now what a, um what would you say are some of your greatest influences growing up uh probably my parents um you know they were just there always there and the most supportive of anything that I wanted to do when I had these dreams of being a fashion designer that was uh, you know something that they really supported and as I moved on and had several different careers I would call it um they've been just been there every step of the way wait now what is this fashion designer thing you want to be a fashion designer <laughs> so like I decided when I was 12 I was like I'm gonna be a fashion designer because I was reading Vogue and um I always read Vogue I'm gonna be a fashion designer I'm gonna live in New York City uh-huh. and so I just always something I wanted to do love shopping, love clothes, love everything. And when, when I went, did my undergrad, I 
in fashion, I went to, I wanted to take the buying office route and did that for several years before I went to grad school and I went at Clark Atlanta University. Um, I got my MBA and moved to New York because all of a sudden magazines were what I loved the most. And so that's where I met you at Essence, kind of where yeah. I ended up. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see. Yeah. I didn't know how you ended up there. <laughs> yeah. But you were on the you were on the business side. I was on the business side. And um, interestingly enough, I, I, you know, I was getting my MBA. And so, you know, when you get your MBA, they're like, there's always these tracks. Like if you go and work for a consumer products company, they, they hire MBAs all the time. But magazine publishing, they do not. So mm-hmm. I remember somehow getting the senior vice president of human resources for Hearst on the phone. And I said, I'm, you know, I'm ready to come from New York for my job, you know, and she's like, will you fly me up? And she's like, no. She's like, I have 10 people sitting in my office that could start tomorrow. Oh. So what you need to do is move to New York. So that's what I did. <laughs> really? Oh, because she's like, yeah, I don't need to move. fly you in if there's yeah, tons of people I sitting here. I have these people. So, yes, yeah, so I, I picked up and moved to New York, found an apartment, and that's where I was. And that's where you started at Hearst? I started, actually, no, I started at Essence. Oh, it was started my very first job in magazine publishing. No, I spent four months looking for a job and interviewing every here, there, and everywhere, and Essence was it. So it was oh, great. Oh, <laughs> nice. I love that. How long were you there? I was there for almost two years. And then, and then I, I moved on to Condé Nast, and I was at Condé Nast for a long time. I worked at Brides and also um, left w- worked at Brides as a, in, in the marketing department and then kind of tried to leave, and I had a baby, and they wouldn't let me leave. So I went for three, day, three days a week, and I worked in the digital department. And ever since then, I've just been digital all the way. Digital all so, the way. Uh, yeah, That's all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad for that transition, though, going from print to digital, or at least even if you go back to print, which most people don't, but even if you right. do, you have that experience. It was a it was a it was a great experience and also gave me a lot of uh, longevity in my career because there's a lot of people that just didn't want to deal with, especially in magazine publishing, didn't want to deal with digital. And so I was like always the go to person there. So right. Good. Excellent. <laughs> so how would you say your natural talents and abilities as a young girl? Well, first of all, going back, I know you had the fashion designer um, aspirations right. and then went to work in publishing. Did you ever at any point think about going to the editorial side? I, I never did. I, I kind of fell in love with advertising sales. It's it's a lot of fun. I love, you know, putting together presentations and putting together like packages to sell to clients. So it just became something that I, I really wanted to do. How do you feel like your natural, naturally who you were, or your natural talents or abilities led you into that kind of work eventually? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, I I let me think about that for just a second. <laughs> um, let's see, my natural talents and abilities. I think that I... Um, I just really enjoy the whole, the business aspect from the point of like putting together a project and just showing the return on investment was, is kind of really was something that kind of drew my interest more towards, more so than the creative side. Mm-hmm. So mm. I think now, that was it. How does it play into now what you're doing today? Because now you're doing a whole new kind of business and out of the, you're completely out of the industry, right? The publishing industry. I'm completely industry. out of the industry. I actually left. Um, in October 14, I, my last position was with W Magazine. I was the digital brand development director. So I kind of, it was a fun job, actually. I straddled um, editorial and sales because I was kind of like the middle, the middle man, mm-hmm. <laughs> so to speak, um, which was, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I, everything that I learned um, in those almost 20 years working in magazine publishing, I used every single day. When I'm talking to prospective clients and putting together proposals and presentations, when I put together my business plan, I learned all of that while I was working. So it was really great. So tell us about your business that I'm very excited <laughs> about, something I hadn't heard of before and then was even more excited to hear that you were the one doing it and, and what it's all about, Hudson oh, Kitchen. Sure, sure. So I have to t- t- take a step back and tell you about how kind of how I got there. Yes. So I, um, as I said, was working at W and really... I was enjoying myself, but I was like, you know, I'm getting older. I'm 40. I want to do something different. And so I discovered a love of um, exercise and working out and was introduced to a barbell and just kind of really fell in love with it. And, um, and you go hard with working out. I've seen I go you. hard. You go hard. Like, <laughs> I was going to say like me, but actually you go harder than I do because you lift and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, the lifting is so much fun. That's like, that's the best part. The squats? So I was, do you do squats? The squat, yeah. I do oh squats, deadlifts. Deadlifts are my favorite. But oh yeah, I gosh. love it. I, I like dream. working out with yeah, you do. I got. I like working out with the guys. Like I'm always usually the only woman there, but <laughs> it's kind it. of I'll, a lot of fun. I love it. Uh, but I kind of started deciding, like, oh, okay, while I was at W, like, what do I want to do next? And um, went to get my personal trainer certification, 
and then decided that, oh, well, this is really interesting, but how am I really going to make money doing this? This market's like very, very saturated. And I was like, I'm gonna, I was like hey, I'm going to start a meal delivery service. So I found a chef and, you know, put together a business plan and everything. And then I realized like, I live in New Jersey. So in the state of New Jersey, it is illegal for you to cook out of your home and sell to the public. So you need a commercial kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wait, illegal for you to cook out of your home? Your, oh, your home and to sell the, to the public. Okay, right. You have to cook out of a commercial facility that's been approved by the health department. Got it. So you couldn't and, be like a personal chef for someone where you cook at your house and... Well, Right. If I'm cooking at my home, if I'm going into their home and cooking, that's one thing. But going into like or hiring a chef to come into your home is different from me saying, hey, I'm going to sell my, you know, my right. meals for ten dollars a piece. I'm going to cook these out of my home. Like that's against the law. Got it. So um, I started to in, like look closer into where could we cook this food and realize that there's nothing in my area. There's no commercial kitchens in our area, like within like 15 miles. And so started talking to food entrepreneurs, going to farmers markets and interviewing people and just realizing that there was a really huge need for a commercial kitchen space um, here. I live in Jersey City, so I'm here in Jersey City, uh, right outside of New York and decided that this is what I was going to do. <laughs> and so I completely pivoted and, and, and changed and changed the business completely. Yeah. So what was so originally the business was going to be you as a fitness instructor and then it moved fitness, into the Right. It was going to be I was going to be a fitness concierge service, essentially. So I went and got, you know, I got my personal training certification, but I was going to be the person that said, you know, hey, Elaine, you are so busy and you need um, and you don't have time to figure out what you want to do. So I'm going to interview you. We're going to figure out that you like yoga. And so I'm going to schedule your yoga class for you. And if you don't want to go by yourself, I'll go with you or I'll find someone mm-hmm. to go with you. Or if you have trouble getting up in the morning, I will pick you up in a car service with a latte and a smoothie and we'll take you to yoga class. Oh, I so still really like that like, business. I know. I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> really like soup to nuts, like, you know, for the busy corporate executive or the busy executive, they don't have to worry about anything that can be healthy without having to think about it. So that was my, my business at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how far down the road did you get with, was it just kind of the concept at first and you were um, figuring it kinda, out? I got, I got to the concept phase before I realized and started, like we actually started testing recipes and then realized with, for the, um, for the meal delivery portion of it and just realized that, you know, kind of wanted to make the change to focus on providing a commercial kitchen for food entrepreneurs. Interesting. Now, is this something that is done a lot in other places? I know you said they don't have it in Jersey City, but did you are you able to see models of it in other places that you can look at? Yes, exactly. There's um, they're popping up all over all of the country. Actually, there are I can't tell you how many, but there are quite a few <laughs> um, that are that are popping up because of the need for the, the need for this kitchen space, um, partly due to. Um, the the explosion in the number of um, farmers markets that are out there and that people want to buy locally mm-hmm. and they want to, you know, people kind of want to create their, you know, kind of want, want locally created products. And mm-hmm. so like, these kitchens have popped up all over the place. There just doesn't, there's happens to be like, you know, there's several in New York and there's several in like Pennsylvania, but there's not a lot here in, in, in New Jersey. Now with the so, farmers markets, is it because of, because I know they're growing the, the food, but is it, what is it? the reason that they would use the kind of kitchen in order to actually prepare the food, like you mentioned? Exactly. People? So a person that, you know, creates gluten-free cookies would have to you know, utilize a commercial oh, kitchen right. to bake their goods in order to go and sell at the farmer's market. So it's a requirement from the health department. I see. To do that. So what's your vision for Hudson Kitchen? What is it? What does it look like? It's, it's very big. I'm sure. Um, so the, so it, the mission is to help food entrepreneurs start and grow their businesses. And we'll do that in several ways. So I started off doing um, networking events for entrepreneurs and we've had two of those events so far. They happen quarterly. So there's another one on September 21st and another one will be December 8th. In addition to that, um, I also offer workshops. So things like the first 10 steps to starting your food business and um, other ones like uh, pricing your food product for profitability, food law, and how to market your food business on a budget. The biggest thing that um, I'm working on right now is uh, is securing a physical space. Mm-hmm. And within that space, there will be um, a lots of lots of things going on. There's going to be uh, four kind of four rent by the hour commercial kitchens, um, two private kitchens for food entrepreneurs that are more established, a conference room for co-working, there'll be computers and access to Wi-Fi and printers, 
and also a lot of storage because storage is really important for entrepreneurs like there are a lot of people that have you know barbecue sauce in their living room because they don't have any place to put it right um and then um uh, the last thing is a studio kitchen for our cooking demonstrations, cooking shows, and chef dinners. So really, a, I'm looking at a 5,000 square foot space and wow. really, really excited about it and scared, <laughs> but really excited about it as well. I, I love that. And I love you for saying that because it's a, it's a big um, endeavor, obviously, yeah. and a big dream, but you're, you're going for it and it's and doing it in spite of the fact that you're scared or maybe because you're scared even yeah. um, is, is uh, it takes courage, right? Because that's what it, entrepreneurship is all about. I, yeah, I'm going to try this true. thing. <laughs> it's it's true. It's true. It's, it's very interesting. Like once I started down the down this road, like the doors have just opened up. I get calls from people saying, "What can I do for you? How can I help you?" People I don't know, right. um, and then also lots of support from you know friends and family as well. So it's been a really an amazing journey, and I'm very excited. But you know, it is every day I have like a knot in my stomach. Like, what am I going to do next? What are we doing today? I love but that. it's also yeah, I do. It's it's I definitely. I, people like to pretend like, oh, it's great. I just started a business. I'm like, that's not me. Right. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, that's not my it's, journey. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, people need to know the truth. Like it is definitely something that's scary, but like I just, you know, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and moving forward. And it's been fantastic. So, so what do you, you mentioned that the doors just started opening, not just started, the doors right. open up as you go along. Do you feel right. like it's because you're in action and saying, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm creating. This is my vision for it. Yes. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but. Right, exactly. I feel like I'm just in the right place um, from, you know, personally and also business wise. Um, so. So, yeah, the, the doors have definitely, definitely been opening. So it's been great. Awesome. Let me ask you, how do you think? Because um, I, I sort of talk to people about this being in shape uh, physically, which sometimes for people it's hard to get in shape if, once you've already started your business. If you're kind right. of already there, you know, because you're busy. But if you're kind of already there, I feel like it helps me to be able to handle things a little bit better. Having some kind of workout routine or something that I do just physically the way I feel, but your mental toughness and all of that. What about you? Because I know you're, you know, like we said, you go hard with working right. out. How does, I, it, <laughs> how does it help you support you? I, I completely agree. I think it it helps to take away some of the stress and anxiety um, by just, you know, working out. And also I like group workouts. So when I go, I'm with friends. And mm -hmm. so we some people that I've gotten to know over the years and we have a really good time. And it's that one hour a day or like every other day where you can just zone out and right. have a good time and, you know, work on your and work on yourself. And when I leave, I'm like, I feel like refreshed and I'm good and I'm ready to go. I love that. That's great. <laughs> one of the things that you mentioned in one of your workshops is the first 10 steps, excuse me, for starting your food biz. What mm -hmm. are, um, are you able to give us like maybe the one first step or the first three that you suggest in a class like that? Sure. I think, um, I think what I, what I think is really important in, in, in talking to other people too is putting together an actual business plan. And I don't mean like a novel, like it doesn't have to be 25 pages, but you need mm -hmm. to put on paper like what your goals are and how you think you're going to get there. Um, I, that's true with but probably with any business, but I, I think it's really important. The other thing is to in, understand the guidelines of your local health department because mm -hmm. they vary from city to city, state to state. It's just, you know, it's different. Um, and, well, and one tip that somebody gave me when I was kind of starting on the whole, like, uh, the journey was when I want to start the food business, she's like, just get started, just get out there, figure out what your recipes are, you know, test it with friends and family and, and just move forward. Like, so that, that advice is like, I would think about that all the time. She's like, just move forward, move forward, move forward, do something every day towards your business. Yes. So I say it. that too. What did I do today <laughs> towards my business? And sometimes right. that could be handling this thing that's just been pending for forever. You know, we, sometimes right. we think, Oh, I didn't do a big move today, but every right. step is a step forward for your Agreed. business. Yeah. I, I try to focus on doing three things a day, mm -hmm. personally and professionally, because three is doable, right? Like, so right. you can do, do you can do three things. Like this morning, I was like, one of my things on my list was to sign up for QuickBooks. So that's something that I, you know, that's something that I was able to do. Right. It took me ten minutes, but it was done, and it was just like kind of like something I could knock off the list. I like to I like to do lists, and I like to check things off. Mm -hmm. So those help. So three things is doable. So, three. and you, you said on your business, <laughs> and then on your personal side, is it like personally. three? So what would be yeah. One? Right. So the three things as well. So I have children. So today, like I focus on like getting their prescriptions renewed or whatever, like whatever they need to do, getting things to the pharmacy, like those types of things right. um, are helpful. Yeah, just to, at the end of the day, you can look back and say, OK, I did these like total of six things and it um, works really well for me and helps me keep me on track. 
That's great. And I like the, what you said, too, that sense of, for some of us, that sense of check, just being yeah. able to say, okay, I yes. took care of that. I know that's done. Other than with me, right. too, helping me remember because I'll forget everything. Also, <laughs> right. you know, I mean, just that idea that I can check this off the list. I'm seeing, right. you see the progress. Right. True. Yeah, Very I love true. that. Now you recently pitched your business in the Start Something Challenge. I did, and that was in, was that in New Jersey too? It was in New Jersey. It is a business competition sponsored by uh, Rising Tide Capital. They are a local organization that helps um, uh, entrepreneurs through training. Mm -hmm. um, and so they every year they have, and I think this was the fifth year they have a Start Something Challenge. And to enter, you have to create a video. So I did that, and you have to get your friends to watch the video. So it's all kind of all about how your network supports you. Mm -hmm. And then um, they pick 30, 30 um, businesses with, with the top uh, video views move on to the next round. So I moved to the semifinal round, and then the the next round was all about voting. So you ask your friends and family and all of your network to vote um, for your business, mm -hmm. and I thought we and I was able to make it to the top ten. So it was really really exciting. I um, did not place in the competition, and I have to say, like to honestly, like I was disappointed in my pitch performance. Okay. Like I, I'm, I was going to ask you about that. that. No, it's true. Like I was, I've been, this, it's been almost two weeks and I've been, I kind of like go back and forth in my head. What, what could I have done better? What could I have done differently? So I like, you know, spent a lot of time preparing for it, but got up there, was ready, like could give you the pitch right now, was ready. And then like, I got nervous mm. and I didn't do as well as I wanted to do. And I'm like, you know, lesson learned, like, you know, I probably next time should have like a note card or something because I had memorized everything and I knew what I, I knew exactly what I wanted to say and, and all that. But yeah, so it was, I didn't, I didn't do as well as I'd wanted to do. I didn't place in the competition, but I'm so glad that I participated. It was a the wonderful experience, experience. was there. Yes. And just to keep moving forward and keep doing it. And out of that came all of that. I had all these meetings set up the next day <laughs> for me, to, even though like, I didn't make it, like I didn't, you know, get to the top three. I still was able, I made a, a ton of connections and then was able to move my business forward. So I love that. Now, two things. One, I would want to hear if you're willing to talk about it, what that mm -hmm. moment was like when you got up there. Cause I think a lot of us go through that where it, whether it's getting on a stage, I assume you might've been on a stage or right. just um, speaking in front of, you know, it might be even in the elevator with someone that you've been trying to meet, dying to meet or face to face with someone right. and you just choke or get in your own head. So what that right. moment with that was like, but also the importance of, like you said, even though you didn't necessarily place in this uh, final group, you still got meetings and those kinds of things from that. So right. just the importance of getting out there. But if you could take us to that moment that you were on the stage, what was that moment like? Nerves are, are natural. Everyone has. Right. That. But what was it? What do you think it was that made you sort of get off track? I, honestly, I think it was like looking out at my family and the, my kids, I think that kind of mm. just threw me off. Mm. And also I was so focused on staying on script, right? So I, you know, you memorize and like, you know, you, you make a little variations here and there, but I was like stuck on my, like, this is the order that it has to, I have to say things in, this is what I have to do. And I kind of like, once I got stuck, I was just stuck. Right. And, it, so and it I was, was like, you're to, thinking the audience knew what you right. were supposed to say. And they, they didn't know. Right. They had no idea. <laughs> Except right. for like the family, like no one else knew that I probably should have said, you know, talked about my physical space before I talked about something else. But so I just needed to like, I, I needed to be out of my own head and like realize that everybody was just wanting to hear about my business. And that was all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a conversation with people. That was it about it was the business, which I do. You do it every day. I do it every day. I can sit across from someone and have a conversation about my business and explain everything to them. And for whatever reason, I definitely was all in my own head. Was that your sure. first one? That was my first business pitch, yes. Business but it was my first presentation. That's why I, you pre I spent my whole career presenting. And so, like, how hard could it be? Yeah. And it was definitely different. <laughs> Something different is riding on it, too. Right. It's yours right. as opposed to... Right. Yeah. That's a, that's, true. Thank you for sharing that. That's interesting because I never know what... I haven't done that, so I didn't know what that feeling is like. But like you said, I talk about my businesses all the time. Or, you right. know, I have conversations with people or even small groups. Right. But when you think about what's riding on it or standing on a stage and that right, kind of thing, right. it might get in your in your own head. I'll be, we'll be right. interested to hear how you do with your <laughs> next one. And it was your first one. So yes. now you learn. So next time, do you think what you'll do is, what do you think you'll do differently? I don't know if it's so note cards. I, I don't know if you need note cards. I feel like you could do it. I think I could do it. I think the, the one thing I'm going to do, because I also been wanting to do focus on more public speaking, because I really enjoy how um, some speakers tell a story before they, they, you know, kind of pull you into whatever they want you to know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to, I've decided, actually my husband and I both have decided we are going to um, sign up for Toastmasters. Nice. And so I think that will help me just to learn something new 
and to get a little more comfortable speaking about the business in front of a group of people. So I had, um, I went, you know, you go from speaking in front of like five people to a hundred right. <laughs> and there's a big difference right. <laughs> between that. So that, I think that'll, I'm hoping that that'll help me learn. I always, I'd want to, I want I spent, I spent so much time preparing for that and I just really want to get better and take myself to the next level. So Right. I know um, about that. what what we talked about uh, uh before the interview, we talked about Lewis Howes and his podcast mm-hmm. and I think Toastmasters is something that he said he did to get more comfortable being in front of the yes. camera and I know other speakers who have done it and who swear by it as one of the ways to help you get used to having to present whatever it is. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah that's really good. looking forward to that. So yeah, be good. That'll, be good. that'll be great. <laughs> so now what do you think are um, three things our listeners need to know when they're pitching or even if even we, you've kind of told us about the pitch, but even when you're preparing for it, um, someone else, Jennifer Love, who is another person, entrepreneur who was an interview and she was talking about she's had uh, clients go on Shark Tank. I should mm-hmm. connect you to. I'm going to connect you guys. Okay, actually. I would love that. But uh, <laughs> yes, but she um, has helped a lot of entrepreneurs move forward in their business. But she talked about um, embodying what you're presenting, like really mm-hmm. every having you have to feel it in order to be mm-hmm. able to present it. What would you say are are your three tips having gone through that first one? Hmm, that's a good question. Probably. It, well, that's really interesting because I really feel like I prepared, but I'm going to say preparation because the preparation helped. It helps me initially to get the nerves out. Like, so by the time they're present, you know, I was ready to go. I thought like, oh, I'm not nervous. I'm good, mm-hmm. <laughs> which actually didn't happen. But I think the preparation, I think, is really important. Um, I think finding a way to connect with the audience um, is important as well. And um, also just having fun with it. Like it's it is your business. Nobody knows it better than than you. Mm. So having, having fun and having a good time while you're presenting, I think it's important. That's a good one. Now, how do you find <laughs> these um, contests and things to enter? Because I'm sure you'll do more. Do you sort of hear about them or cert- do you actually do a search to look for contests in your area or things that you I, can? This one I actually heard about because I, I, I went through the Rising Tide Capital um, Entrepreneurship Program. They have a, what they call a Community Business Academy, and I went through that program. So I kind of is very familiar with the organization. I honestly have to do a little more research because it's something I do want to do more often is, is pitch the business, um, you know, for investment, of course. So that's something I'm, I'm working on doing. Would you ever go on Shark Tank? Um, I would I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I know sure. they've come to New York before for a couple of uh, for a couple of auditions. Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely do that. Yeah, why not, right? Why not? I like the challenge. It's good. Who's um who's who's uh what does your support network look like? You do you have um, a team of people working with you, partners or what does it look like in your business so, and otherwise? I'm the sole owner of the business, but I have, you know, a, a lot of good friends who actually happen to be professionals in the business. So I have a friend that owns a creative agency who um, worked with me on all my uh, branding and logo development and does everything, um, everything soup to nuts as far as like what the look and feel of um, all my materials are. And her name is Joanne and she's great um, from Fusion Creative here in Jersey City. I also work with um, Anita Bell from Anita Bell Events. She is my event partner. We do every event together. I could never do an event by myself. She mm. allows me to, I, I kind of, I tell her kind of what I'm looking for and then she, we, she kind of takes it from there and I'm able to show up at an event and like actually be me, be the founder and CEO of Hudson Kitchen and walk around and meet people and she kind of handles all the back end everything. So it's great. Nice. And then I also work with um, a guy named Wesley Hall from Pear Dallas Media. He does all the film and photography for for Hudson Kitchen. So those are my, those are my people. Yeah, that's <laughs> that good. I, I, so you I have good on. people in key areas. I have great people. Yes, definitely. So I'll be, I'm looking for, um, more consultants to work with, uh, a culinary consultant sent, you know, food is not my first, was not my first career. So it's, I'm, I'll be hiring somebody soon to help me through the process of working on working on the actual kitchen itself and how it's going to operate. So that's my next kind of my next move there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And they have to be based in New Jersey or can it be? I would like them to be. I've been finding it's been fun to kind of hire people that are that are local mm-hmm. and I like, really support local small businesses have been fun, but they don't, they don't have to be necessarily, but it's really nice if they are. <laughs> yeah. And that's a good, that's interesting. Cause it's a very good part of to, part of your business. It kind of matches what your business is all about. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if there's one thing that you wish people, if you wish someone told you about entrepreneurship, what would it be? Even though I know you're still in the early stages, but is there one thing that you say, Oh, I wish someone had told me that. Hmm. Probably that probably the, 
um, what is that old saying? Get comfortable with being uncomfortable because I'm mm. like uncomfortable like every day, <laughs> every day, all the time. I've kind of gotten it's kind of gotten used to it. But I think that's the one thing. I'm like, it's just you know, it's an uncomfortable feeling, but kind of just to push through and keep and keep moving. What is, is really your, important. what is your um, what does your husband think about the business? I know he's not he's not in the business with you. You said he's not in the business with me, but he is extremely supportive. He's the one driving me to farmers markets all the time, like mm. so I can get out and meet people. Because one that's one of the things that we you know, one thing you have to do is like you gotta we are meeting with other small businesses face to face, and so he does that for me. He yeah he just is a, a really huge huge support and without him I wouldn't be able to do this um full time so, so yeah. it's really nice <laughs> what is it like for you to have to push through the um going up to me I mean we talked about being introvert but you're not you right. know terribly shy and can't right. communicate with people but is there I, I ask because I know with me when I've talked to people about my position um at Essence back when you and I probably worked there mm-hmm. together um uh, being the entertainment editor and being someone who's not necessarily you know outward very outgoing and that kind of thing in that way of running up to people like hey I need you to be in the magazine you know just right it wasn't didn't come naturally I had to push but I always said I just created this other person in my mind and that was the person going doing those you know you have to do whatever kind of mind tricks or hacks as they say now to get yourself to be able to do that and and exert that energy and and tap into some kind of motivation for it so what what is it like for you to do that now is it getting easier or was it always easy um, it's definitely getting easier. I do have my moments where I just rather be at home on the couch, right. but I make myself <laughs> go places. So when I go somewhere like a networking event, say I like set a goal of meeting like three to five people mm-hmm. and talking about my business. So I, once I like can check that I've done the three, then I'm like, okay, I'm good. And now I'm all around the room talking to people about my business all day, but I needed to, I need to kind of get myself to that point each time. I'm like every, each time I like, go three people and then, um, and then I'm, I'm good. I, once I start talking, I don't stop. Right. Me. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous going in, but once I'm once I'm there, I'm good. I love that idea setting a minimum of a, um, three people because then it pushes you to to at least reach that, and then like it warms right. you up, so to speak. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Now, what is um, having a business? What's the greatest lesson it's taught you about yourself as a woman? Um, I think I'm stronger than I think I than I thought I was. Like I'm, I there's a lot that I can do and a lot I haven't done yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> I That's love it. it. <laughs> so what's next? What are you excited about? What is, what's coming up um, for Hudson Kitchen for let's, you? What let's see. Um I am excited about my next networking event. It is a speed networking for food entrepreneurs. So it's twenty experts, forty entrepreneurs in a room. And they get three minutes to pitch their business to someone that could be anybody from like marketing public relations to food law. Um, to branding and events, and they really, and uh, also an inv- you know investors, and they'll have the opportunity to ask specific questions um, of these people and uh, and network. It's not like controlled networking, but I'm like that's going to be a, a really fun event. I'm really excited about that, and that's on September 21st. Okay. Here in here um, in Jersey City, and people can find out about it from uh, my website. It's thehudsonkitchen.com. Okay, so they can go there. I'll make sure I yes. have links to everything. Okay. So people can go there, the Hudson Kitchen. Okay. And And then um, other exciting thing, let's see, I just hired a kitchen designer and architect and I've located a space. So we are moving Mm -hmm. forward. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. So very, like I said, scary things. I woke up this morning like, oh, wow, what do I do? But um, yeah, very, very scary things and very great things are happening. Where's the space? What part of the city? What part of Jersey? It's in... It's in Jersey City, and it's um actually there's actually two spaces, but the one that I'm, I'm focusing on right now is in the Bergen Lafayette area nice. of, um, of Jersey City. So it's kind of up and coming, and um, yeah, it's exciting. It's good. Nice. It has everything I want. It's everything you want. That's good. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, parking is a very important thing. <laughs> so space and parking. So that's all that those are the good things here. It's How did you go about finding the space? By. Was it with the realtor or just out of asking around? No, actually, I had started because I started. Um, you know, a little bit of, like a year ago looking for space. So it's taken a long time. So patience is something that's really important. But um, I started working with a realtor and then started just talk, telling people what I was looking for. And a friend of mine who is a chef um, found, he like started talking to a broker who had, had some information about about this one space. So that's kind of like just word of mouth. And it's, I think it's really important to tell people what you're doing Mm -hmm. and what you want to do because they don't, they may not know at that moment, but six months from now, you know, they may 
come up with something and like refer you to someone. So it's been, that's been really great. That's so I, another thing you said, that's great. That's so important. Another thing that I say is tell people what you're up to, you know, yes. people that, and that even if it's someone like you said, that either can't help in the moment or that might not be directly tied to your business, you never know. Right. right? To say, right. This, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm creating. This is what I want to do, even though I don't know how. And then you'd be right. surprised how it just comes either from them or someone else. You never know. Right. True. true I can't true. wait to hear about your space. That's fantastic. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time today. I'm excited yeah, to hear you. Though, I know we thought it was a pre-interview, but this is the thing thing. I did. This is the presentation. <laughs> this is it. You were great. This is it. Thank you. Thank so, you. Wrapping up, I want to ask you a question. If you think over your life and your career and you had a chance to thank only one person whose support was critical to you personally or professionally, who would that be and what would you say? Um, wow. Other than my family, um, there's a woman that I worked with at Condé Nast. I worked with her at both at Brides and at W. Her name is Elizabeth Nan. And she was amazing. <laughs> um, she's a really great mentor to me. And I would have loved to tell her thank you. Like every when I when I when I'm doing things throughout the day, I'm like, what would Elizabeth do <laughs> constantly? Mm. Like she's like it was, it was a really great support system. Could call her right now and she's like is amazing. She's just a really great support for me. That's awesome. So and, she's still a, a support today even though you don't yes, work together. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But I learned so much from her over the years. So yeah. I was happy to happy to know her. <laughs> I love that. So final question, what can we do to support you? I know about the event. We're going to hook up to that. Is there anything else you need people to do or to look out, be on the lookout for? Um, let's see. Well, I'd love for people to follow my, um, follow me on social media. So mm-hmm. I'm in, at Instagram is at the Hudson kitchen and also Facebook is the, is slash the Hudson kitchen and Twitter is Hudson underscore kitchen. So please, please follow me there. I would really appreciate it and let me know what's going on. Um, it would be great. Great. And now if people are interested in using or getting in touch with you about eventually using the space, should that be through the website also? Yes. On the website, there is a page where um, businesses can sign up for more information and to be notified when uh, we are launching. Excellent. What Do you have a plan yet for when you're going to launch? Or you'll see after you find this, get the I'll, space settled. Right. As soon as I get the space settled, I'll have more of an idea, but I'm looking towards early next year. Yay. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. This is wonderful. I'm so happy I happened to see. Thank I think you. I happened to see the, about your the uh, uh, call out that you did about the pitch and just to see what is. Uh, it's so wonderful to know the kind of interesting things that, that people yeah. are up to. That yeah. is awesome. I love it. So what's a parting piece of advice you have for us before you go? Um, oh, let's see. Probably just keep moving forward. Put one foot in front of the other and keep and keep moving forward. Do something every day on your business uh, that that moves it forward. And also um, be really appreciative and grateful for your friends and family. I have a wonderful support system that I would not be here without. So I love them so much. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Janaba, thank you. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for listening to that episode of the Support is Sexy podcast. And I do hope that you got some inspiration from it. And the challenge is for you to do at least one thing. Take one thing from the episode, at least one thing. You can always do more, but at least one thing that will help you move one step closer to your dream. Whether that's launching a business, writing a book, whatever that thing is that you want to do, take something from this episode and move one step closer. And what I'll also ask of you, if you can tell me what you think about the episodes, what we've been doing, what you want to hear what you like, what you experience while you're listening, go over to iTunes.com slash support is sexy. Leave us a review and let me know what's going on. What are you thinking? What are you feeling about the show? What else can I do to be of service to you, which is what this is all about, to be of support to you. That's our buzzword, right? You can also go to my website, elainefluker.com slash podcast. So that's E-L-A-Y-N-E. F-L-U-K-E-R dot com slash podcast. Hear more episodes there. Also have a bunch of great videos, tons of information. It's where I'm going to be spending a lot of time and it's where I'd love to connect with you. So again, thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate you and your support. And the most important thing I want you to remember is having it all does not mean doing it all alone. So now go out there and create something sexy and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.